Hi there. Today we're going to be talking about contactless payment and why it doesn't always work. My name is Steve. This is TQA Weekly and contactless payment, often referred to as PayPass, PayWave, Apple Pay or Google Pay or anything else, is a contactless payment system. And these are what we have been using, especially with pandemic. They have been around for a really long time, even longer in Canada and Europe than it was in the United States. And it's basically now the norm. You pay using a card or with your mobile device. And what you're about to learn today are from the most common to the least likely scenarios why you cannot pay with PayPass, PayWave, Apple Pay, Google Pay, or anything else. Starting with the most common reason why you can't actually pay with your PayPass card, PayWave, or anything else, your card or your device has a functional issue with it. Meaning that the coil antenna on the cards that allows it to be powered and allow for transmission has been cracked. The same does exist inside of a phone. While it is self-powered, if you break the antenna, the RFID antenna in your device, it wouldn't work. So it is far more likely for the end user, being you, to have broken your side of the equipment other than the device itself not actually working. Many of you bend your cards, do not do this. Whether it's bending while you're paying or bending your wallet, you're breaking the antenna. In the case of phones and other mobile devices, if you drop it, you potentially run the risk of breaking equipment inside of your phone, and therefore it might very well be an accident or your fault or someone else's fault but if the equipment is broken, it wouldn't work at all. That has nothing to do with the terminal itself. Another more likely reason to why PayPass, PayWave, and everything else wouldn't work has to do with the internet. The internet is not a very simple thing, and a lot of people seem to think that it is a one-to-one -one connection, meaning that your merchant is talking directly to your bank, and that's not how it works. Any break in the system would actually prevent any type of payment of processing. Keep in mind that basically a merchant is gonna send the information to a payment processor and the payment processor will send the payment information to one of very many payment servers. Your Magstripe, your chip and pin, and your contactless payment are not sent necessarily to the same servers and it is possible for one of those servers to be offline while the other payments work. So if any of those servers are offline, it wouldn't work. Which brings us to the other possibility, which might be your bank. Your bank might actually be the reason why you're unable to pay. If they are offline for any reason whatsoever, your payment wouldn't go through. But are the reasons why it might be related to your bank and not the payment processor, not your device or anything else. It might be that your card is deactivated, your account is frozen, your balance just doesn't have enough money to cover for that and a lot of people are ashamed, I understand. But if you don't have enough money, blaming the merchant isn't going to be the solution. We know that it was declined, it's written on our screen. But there are also other reasons other than that where we can have other kinds of code that show up on our screen that mean a multitude of things that have to do with your accounts. Most employees don't have any idea what they mean, but if you want to know one code, if it's written code 10, it's an attempt at fraud. But there are other reasons why that your card wouldn't work. Then, of course, one of the very least likely reasons why your card simply didn't work or your phone didn't work, the payment terminal. It is nothing more than a simplified computer. It does have a cache in it. It's supposed to be purged automatically by the software, but if it doesn't happen, it will load up. But you're not really likely to find a payment terminal that will reliably be the reason why your contactless payment doesn't work. You see, the fix to that is pretty simple. We unplug it and we replug it, and inside of 30 seconds, the machine is usually loaded and continues on its day for weeks or even months on end without any future issue whatsoever. 
The odds that the payment terminal is the reason why your car didn't work when 25 others just succeeded are pretty low. It is more than likely, like I said at the beginning, your card or your phone the actual issue. Which brings us to the last point of failure, the cash register, which is nothing more than a computer. However, contrary to your own home computer, they are rigorously tested, they are stripped down versions of operating systems, they are updated with updates that complement or augment their performance, they don't actually make them unstable, and the odds of them crashing are pretty low compared to your home computer. Not to mention that these are usually computer systems that are made in the thousands and even millions of identical devices that are all functioning all of the time. And even if one cash register were to fail because, I don't know, one day it just dies. Most merchants have more than one cash register, meaning your transaction could be processed at another cash register, unless we're talking about smaller merchants. Meaning that that too is an incredibly rare event that may or may not allow you to pay for the items that you're looking for. So if there is anything that you learned from this episode today, I hope you understand that you need to take better care of your card. Do not bend it. Make sure that it stays flat. Don't kink the card whatsoever. You will break the antennas in it. And if you do pay with your phone, avoid dropping it at all costs. Breaking the RFID antenna in your phone makes all payments impossible to do. So like this episode if you like it, dislike it if you didn't, share with those that you think can benefit from this, and don't forget to subscribe, and if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or topics, email me at ask at tqwayweekly.com or go to my website, tqwayweekly.com, where you can see the show notes on this episode, past others, find other ways of subscribing, and of course, use the contact form to email me directly, and there's a Discord link down below to join others talking about this show. And if you want to see me play video games, head over to twitch.tv, slash Z Axis 1981 where I am currently playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern. There is a Discord link down below for that where I do indicate a schedule that you can follow along with, and I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching and goodbye.